Welcome. Welcome to the Creative Marketing Show. I am your host, Rosh Sillers. It is great to have you here. And we have a good topic today. It's about educating your customers. And this is show number 435 of the podcast. We've been doing this for over 10 years. And we have a lot of interesting information, including question and answers at the end of the show. So one of the things that I, I like to uh, kind of bring out in the beginning of these uh, presentations, especially when it relates to education, you know, when it comes to our customers, the, the fact is not many of them really want to be educated. Uh, many of those who, of you who are uh, photographers, uh, who truly understand the value of a copyright and so forth, you know, you want to educate your clients, but they don't want to be educated. However, there are some things that you can do to help them, to educate them in a way that is beneficial to everyone. So welcome, everyone. My name is Rosh. And again, this is show number 435. We're talking about marketing and versus education, really. I mean, there is a big difference. However, there is a common theme. And that is that it, it's both about, both of them are about communication. It really is important to know how to communicate well, to educate clients as well as to market. Now, marketing too, it's certainly trying to tell a story and that's something that's common between both marketing and education. If you wanna communicate well, a good story, well, it's gonna help you out. And so, I think, though, that marketing is trying to get somebody to take action immediately um, with a good call to action, where education is kind of, I guess, marketing is a little quicker approach, or at least designed to be so, where education it tends to be a longer term approach. Hey, thanks for the thumbs up. I always appreciate that. Thank you. The longer term approach can lead to a lot more loyalty. And I have a few things that I wanna share with you related to this. Um, the fact that most people don't want to be educated is why we, we can't go in to the, the engagement with our customer as I'm out to educate you. I don't, excuse me, there goes my voice. I'm out to educate you. When someone says that to you, you're not, you instantly, it's almost as bad. I'm here to market to you. <laughs> I, I really think it is. I, and so you have to make it more fun. It doesn't have to be painful. When you start to educate clients, uh, you, you should start with your website. Make your website fun and informative. And I have a whole list of ways in which we can connect and educate with our clients here. So I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing forward to sharing all of them with you. But the first one, when we talk about marketing, we talk about our solar system. And in the center is our sun. And that's our website. And that is where we convert. But the only way to convert is to create trust. And convert is someone doing what you want them to do, whether it's download something, purchase from you, uh, whatever it may be, just connect with you, you know, say, hey, I would like more information, whatever that may be. That all happens on the website. And there, it's that's where you can market, but even better, educate. You can use your blog. You can use a blog to educate people with behind the scenes, sometimes just behind the scenes information can be really, really helpful to people to understand how things work, to understand your process. We talk about processes all the time. We have our combination on the other channel. It's 7531 and three is about processes and processes help you streamline and make your company work better. And if the customer knows that process knows the way you approach your business and ultimately the way you approach serving them, it's going to be a lot better. I mean, the thing is when you have educated customers, 
Yes, sometimes it can be a problem if you feel like they know everything. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But just think about it. When people understand a little bit more, a lot of times they understand why things don't go a certain way or why things can't happen. Sometimes customers have unrealistic expectations. Now, there's nothing wrong with a customer having high expectations, but unrealistic, meaning that what they want to have done hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's just that straightforward, The that option. Now, that doesn't mean you don't sit back and think, hmm, that's interesting. wonder if we can make that happen. Well, that's that's certainly something that you'll, you'll have to look at at the time, but you should always keep an eye out for those complaints. But if you can educate people in a way that helps them understand that process, you're going to be better off. Consider doing creating tutorials. Tutorials can be created many different ways. A podcast could be a tutorial on how to use a product or service, a blog post, as well as video. Uh, I'm going to get into video in a few minutes, so I'm not going to go too deep into that. Uh, FAQs, frequently asked questions. You should have on the top navigation, FAQ, in a drop down with all of those questions that people commonly ask of you about what you do. And seriously, you'll, you'll cut down and even pre-qualify people. You can actually you know, create this narrative through your FAQ that pre-qualifies people about working with you, purchasing your product and service, what your product or service does and does not do. So you don't have to answer those questions in a sales meeting, which can be really expensive, which can be time consuming and you, or even just even on the phone, which of course is, can be time consuming. So a good FAQ, I think is a really good way to go. And it does save a lot of time and it educates the customer. Online manuals, put your manuals online to show people how to do things, how to fix things. I mean, think of it, let's say you sold bikes. I mean, that's kind of an off the wall thing, but if you sold bikes, having you know, a manual how to put that bike together, it's gonna save a lot of time and energy if people can just go to the website, it's very prominent. What are those biggest, the biggest things that people need to know that you get tired of saying over and over again when you can show them how to fix it? Give people case studies. Educate them with case studies. Then they can see the entire process, how to do things, how you go through the process of doing what you do best. And, and they can actually see the status, get, receive the satisfaction and you really earn more trust in you because they've seen the results, how you did this and this was the result. And if it's a similar result that they are looking for, that case study is going to be very educational for them in terms of understanding what you do, what you can do for them. And man, that that makes that, that really just takes off a lot of the pressure. And, and again, back to that pre-qualifying. I think education, pre-qualifying people with education is so helpful. That's why a lot of times I put in some situations, put my prices online. It's an educational element. And if people see those prices for certain types of services and it's, it's too high for them, well, I pre-qualified them <laughs> and it's no problem. For some, oh, hey, that's fine, that, no big deal. And they call or they email, they connect with me somehow. I pre-qualified that I educated them whether I am the right person for them or not. And sometimes we get a little nervous. We feel like, wow, you know, we could lose great opportunities. I think for the most part, you're not going to lose as many opportunities as you are going to gain time and freedom and, and actually qualify people into the possibility of actually understanding who you are and trusting you enough to actually hire you. So that I think, you know, yes, there is always that one opportunity that could be lost, but I think there are greater gains to be earned by educating and sometimes just laying it all out there, giving them everything that somebody would object to right there on the front page. <laughs> so you have to weigh that. Sometimes you 
you really just need to be in front of somebody. It depends on the industry you're in. And if you can be in front of somebody, you've qualified them enough over the phone for sake. You have a process that you go through and you've, you know, maybe five minutes is all you need. Qualify them and go see them. That's fine. As long as you know and are in control of that process and know the value to your business. That's the key. What doesn't work is just randomness and not having a plan and don't really care how <laughs> how it works out. You just take let, let the customer be in charge. And that's quite honestly one of the toughest things, toughest ways to, to run a business. Um, not, not to say that the customer can't have their opinion. Doesn't mean the customer can't um, request or even again, as I mentioned, have high expectations. But you have to stay in control of the process. Okay, let's talk video a little bit. Video really is an excellent way to, to engage people, to educate people. And going live like this, this is an educational moment. I, I shared the first, really most of the podcast is educational. You, you listen to this because maybe you'll catch one tidbit of information each time you listen to the show, maybe two or three. You never know. Um, that, that's the idea. I hear that all the time. You know, because I talk a lot about many similar things over and over again, because a lot of times it's the first time somebody has heard the show. And but for many people, they hear it and they hear, oh, you know, that didn't click before. Oh, I, I, that angle. I understand now. And so they come back and they get a few more little tidbits. And that's why I listen to podcasts. A lot of times I listen to podcasts. I know a lot about what they're talking about, but it's a topic I'm interested in growing my business, social media, digital marketing, uh, whatever it may be. But sometimes there's that little piece that someone shares is something that's new, something that's developing. And wow, that was worth the time that I spent listening. And I hope to provide that for you. So going live to educate on Facebook, if you have a good Facebook following, then, then use Facebook. If you have Instagram, YouTube, and soon, soon LinkedIn. And I'm going to answer a question in, in a few moments in the um, question answer section uh, related to that. So I'll, I'll get to that in a moment because uh, I think it, it, some people are curious about how I'm approaching uh, some of uh, the social in the new year. So I want to address that a little bit. How about free webinars? Free webinars, sharing information. What is the pain point that people who need your product or service have? What is that pain point? So what kind of a webinar, free webinar that you can provide? You could use Zoom and you could do a half hour webinar for free using Zoom and invite people and you can, and that's zoom.us and you can invite people and maybe 10, 15 people show up. That, that'd that be great. I mean, we often hear about all oh, these webinars that had hundreds of people in, and I've been on them. I, I think I've been on some of them, almost had a thousand people listening to me, but that you know, if it's for my business, you know, 10, 15 people who really have that pain point that I could serve, that's good because I could gain a client or two out of that webinar and and I could interact with those people and actually build a relationship versus a thousand people, 500 people. You're not going to build much of a relationship with many of those people um, at any level. And so it's just more of kind of like mass marketing. So both have their place, believe me. So free webinars, uh, product and service demonstrations. You can do that in a webinar, but you, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do that in a go live situation. You can do that in a blog post. I mean, there are a number of ways you can even do it in a podcast. I mean, as long if it's a something you can explain through through the voice. So it just depends. Depending on the product or service, it may take, may take text, it may be audio or visual. So you have to decide which is right for what it is that you sell. Okay, so ultimately, the problem solving is, is one thing you can do is to help people solve their own problems with your product or service being the answer. If you take that, that thought number one, 
and and education is the format. Now you can you can translate in, that into marketing. It is getting a little blurrier over the time over over time. I've seen more and more blurriness between the two areas. People talking, educating the customer as marketing, and marketing as educating the customer. And I see some validity in that. But I think for the most part, we should have two separate overall. It doesn't mean that you can't share content but I'd like to have them as two different strategies because you can be much more focused in the approach, which can be much more appropriate uh, for it, for what you're trying to do. So, you know, why are you doing this? You're, you're trying to earn customer loyalty. You're trying to increase trust in you and the brand because again, people purchase from people who they trust. And honestly, it reduces complaints and it pre-qualifies people. Those are the four areas that I think are really important in terms of the education model. And marketing goes into a lot of other areas. We talk about awareness, traffic, conversions, and retention. Those are the four areas we talk about for marketing specifically. And, and I talk about that mostly on the other channel. You can catch that other channel, Rosh.video, if you uh, want to head on over there. I have over 800 videos to share on marketing for everyone. But... If I, if, I can, if I can, with my education, improve the loyalty, improve the trust, and reduce complaints, and pre-qualify people, I think I'm doing okay with my education, and it can be a much more smaller group. So, you know, one of the things that I also like to um, approach is um, thinking about and, and, and thinking about what could be the other angle. What, what, what could be the negative of this? I've just shared what the positives are, but what's the negative? And I think the number one negative that people kind of uh, think about is like, you know, the, the know-it-all customer. But, you know, you know, th giving people too much information may put more demands on you. And, and quite honestly, that know-it-all customer probably has already done their own research before they got to you. And, and there's, I have nothing wrong with an informed customer because if, it, if someone's informed and really understands what it is I do, they just don't have time or the skill or the ability or whatever it may be to do what I do, even though they understand it, they, be, they make great customers because they get what I am doing. And if I can up that not just take it a, a few levels higher than what they were doing, they feel like they're getting value because they know that they're getting more than what they would do. So I like an educated customer. I really do think it can be a, a great benefit. And another thing I like to do is help the customer when they when they had when they've been educated, when you've given them a lot of information, they kind of feel in the know, which also increases that loyalty. And it leads to them to want to know more. Make them feel like they're part of the team. They understand everything. They have that. It's kind of like when you go someplace where people, kind of the cliche where people know your name. You know, you, you've connected with people. You kind of know the inner workings of the place or the inner workings of the service or business. When you feel like you have that knowledge, you become a little more loyal to that customer. So there you go. Uh, I, I think that's really the biggest part uh, of it all. I mean, that's taking the time and having a plan on how you're going to educate the customer as part of your marketing and integrate it into all of your marketing, especially your website. And again, that's why blogs are there is to, I mean, I, I see a lot of people using blogs just for stuff. And you, when the best, the best thing you can use your blog for, especially if you're a small business, local business is to localize the questions. So if you're in a town in Missouri, then localize that question for a town in Missouri and use the landmarks, use the lingo, use things that people in Missouri, that small town or in Missouri as a whole, would understand and people in Ohio would not. And, and then give them that information, at, answer those questions, and again, help them feel in the know. I mean, how many times have you... If you had a conversation with somebody and you you shared some facts and you know you got those facts from a radio or TV commercial, how many times did that happen? I bet it has. Because sometimes 
you know, marketing can be educational and, and it sometimes more and more, all of a sudden more and more people know this little fact and they keep sharing it everywhere. And it seems like it's this new thing and we all got it from the t- same TV or radio commercial. I, I find it funny, but it, it happens. So people will be more willing to remember. And, and chances are you do remember where you got that bit of information from too. So that, that, that's another element. All right, so I want to go into question and answer. If you have questions uh, for during this show, those of you who are live or on the replay, put questions in the comments below. And I can even use your questions or thoughts as topics for future shows for the podcast. So um, I have a few questions here that I want to get into. I thought something that was very interesting, um, and I only have one little bit of news that I, I kind of marked. And that was Google is testing larger ads, uh, image search ads. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, those of you who are in the visual fields, uh, in the visual field, for sure, photography, uh, that, that just makes photography more important. You know, good quality photography uh, continues to be more and more important. And you just can't forget about that. that that's just for sure. Uh, those are for my photo friends. And so make sure you, you understand that value of your good work. Okay, what questions? Uh, Q&A. Uh, what, so this is what I had mentioned before. And the question is, what are you doubling down on this year uh, in for 2019? And my response was video slash YouTube and LinkedIn. Those are the areas that I am doubling down on. I'm continuing. I, I got to say, I have. Uh, I'm going to give you a few YouTube tips that I, I see working for me in some areas that I, I want to share with you and really get a philosophy. So those of you who are interested in YouTube, definitely ch- listen to this part when I when it comes up because it it may click for some of you and some of you say, "Oh yeah, I know that." I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a moment. So anyway. T- what about blogs? What about so for po- podcasting? Am I continuing with those? And yes, I'm continuing. Doubling down on no podcasting once a week, solid. I'm continuing that. Doing the live show, video, YouTube, um, and my blogging. I, I would like to increase, kind of get back to the level I was at, but I, I've been slow. But I do have this podcast on RoshSillers.com each week, so at least there's content being put up there, and I'm still kind of going back and forth on the types of content I like to deal with uh, on that on that podcast, excuse me, on that blog. So we'll we'll see how that all goes. I had a question this week, uh, you know, should should you actively link build? This is going to the search engine optimization question. And you know, I, I would say that you're probably better off creating good articles without a lot of competition and start looking to see uh, what you can um, share on your blog that doesn't have a lot of competition, but does have traffic that would go to it, um, that people are searching for what you're talking about. I would start there. If you don't know much about link building, and that you know technically is against Google's terms of service, there are a lot of ways to go about it. You should have what is referred to as a natural link profile. And if you really don't understand how to go about doing all this in which it looks natural, well, then I would recommend, you know, if you have the opportunity to put a link somewhere, do it. But don't have a, don't don't go out there and and make that strong effort like a SEO, search engine optimization professional would do. You know, look for those opportunities, sign up wherever you can, you know, for your, for your site, you know, if there's a business listing directory, put it put it in. You know, make sure you have your Google business page. Make sure you're signed up in social media. Those links do have value in that process. And if you guest post or something, that's fine too. Uh, but again, don't go all in on one thing. Just make it a natural process. But those links, as you you just make that effort, that natural effort. If you're in the construction, the trades, you know, get get on Home Advisor, and if you if Better Business Bureau is a good place for you, do that. Everywhere you can get a link, that kind of stuff is probably okay, and it gets you active in the community. 
Okay, so let me talk about YouTube a little bit. And um, so, hey, Harley, how you doing? Uh, does it make sense to think of education component to be another product, probably free, you provide, and it should be marketed in the same way other products are? Uh, explain the value proposition. Um, hmm. Let me read that out loud again. Does it make sense to think of education component to be another product, probably free you provide? Um, it, it can be. I mean, if you're thinking of it as a free video, free white paper, free podcast, um, and it, it certainly it could be. Um, I guess I'm not fully clear on that. And it should be, should it be marketed in the same way, other way uh, products are? Um, in other words, the education you provide uh, should be marketed where you explain the value for the customers. Not, nece not necessarily, although I think you should explain the value to the customers. I mean, I think outright your value proposition and the value to the customers are on your sales pages. Although, I think what you're saying is still important. It doesn't mean you can't put your value proposition. It does not mean you can't have a good call to action in your educational elements. I mean, there. I guess that's where I was before about saying kind of split them up. Yes, you can mash it all up. I like to mentally, mindfully keep them kind of separate and know that they're part of the same maybe ultimate goal. Uh, but I, I wouldn't make the, I guess my answer would be no in terms of making it the whole thing. I hope that's understandable. Um, and I'm hoping I'm understanding your question properly. Um, but I would say that, you know, they are in a sense, two separate things, although elements of them could not, can certainly be a part of each. Um, again, it all depends on your industry and the way you approach things. I mean, obviously some people are all in where education is their product. That, that is a fair statement. Maybe that's where you're going, Harley. All right. Um, tips on YouTube. So this is, this is where I am right now on YouTube and what needs to be done. Um, you know, sometimes you, you just keep learning and you learn the things when you need to know it. And I've always I've known that playlists are important. I've known that getting people to the next video is important. I also know that watch time is important. And I you know and I've I've been conscious of all of those elements related to YouTube. But what I've had to finally say, okay, I, I was getting some good traction, uh, specifically on the other channel. Um, and some good traction with some good good topics. And I was making them a little longer. And so I was getting some good watch time and a few views. I, I don't get an outrageous number of views, that's for sure. Um, but it really came down to this, is the whole idea that, look, before I start my video, we often will say, okay, what is the end game for that person? What is that person going to learn? Um, if you you know, listen to uh, Sunny Leonarduzzi. She talks about her hot script, which is a great formula to get, you know, just to get people, get that hook first and, and, and then go through that process. And which is also important. But what I'm doing right now is working with the idea of, look, if I create a 10 minute video and 25% of the people or 15% of the people are there at the end, that's not awesome. The goal is to get to have 50% of those people there. And that's certainly going to happen more at a four-minute video, a five-minute video, maybe even a three-minute video. So my new goal and thought process is, look, I want to create a video. And maybe for me, people can only handle <laughs> those videos two, three minutes of me. <laughs> and then after that, you know, that's it. That's done. Well, then that's where I am. Um, I've certainly made it work longer when I when I've really focused in on creating a hook and share and a hook and a share hook, kind of bring people along through a 10, 10 minute video, but I often don't put enough hooks in there to keep them going along. So if I'm going to do something regular, I'm going to go three to five minutes. And my goal isn't so much, I mean, it is to, to, you know, 
get that person to what they want at the end of the video, by the end of the video. But to sell the next playlist, to sell the next video. So if I can get half the people through a three to five minute video and a percentage of them, and this is where this comes into play. So maybe some of you, and I may, I'm sure Harley, you, you listened to that last week, Tim's discussion about the playlists and how you know your average click on a play uh, on a uh, end card maybe you know 0.51% and he's seen it much higher like 30% higher when you actually pitch that playlist at the end and this is where a lot of this came from uh, is, is is those final pieces and I um, I thought to myself you're right and so I took off taking off the uh, you know best for uh, viewer and in, in, in my l latest upload and just put a big playlist, car, you know, element there and pitch it at, at a couple times through the video and not pitching for subs, not, not pitching for, um, you know, anything else, but trying to get them to the next video. And so if my video was too long, yeah, I may have gotten a little, little more time with some people. However, most people will not even have the chance to get to that next playlist or video. And so I have one spot where, yes, you're saying hardly, yeah, I need to work at selling the next video playlist. I, I'm going for the playlist. I, I have 800 videos, hardly. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I can put together two or three videos. And what I did over the weekend, and I think you may find this of value. This, this may just, for those of you listening to the podcast, just may be a conversation between me and Harley. You're just listening to this because I know Harley is uh, building a YouTube channel too. And so what I did is I went through a year's worth of videos, and I'll probably go a little bit further. And I looked for the videos that had 100% relative retention. You know, you go into old, the st uh, studio, the classic. I'm, I hope they still put it, they're going to put this in the new version in the beta, but it's not there yet. But you have audience retention and you have absolute and relative. And relative means that if you're way up high, if you're staying above average, that means your video, your five minute video, more people are engaged or with that or, or watched or however they measure it more than the average video on YouTube. And those are the videos that tend to do well because it's a better video. YouTube is telling you that. This is a good one versus one that just, I've had many, it starts off and it goes boom, right to the bottom and never recovers. <laughs> Nobody was interested at all. So I took those videos and I put them in a list. And so I'm starting off, the, the playlist that I'm pitching to is to a video that has 100% relevant audience retention, meaning the, the the list I'm pitching to is going, they're going to go to a video. If they, if the percentage of them go, they'll go to a video that most people who are interested in that topic really like is a good video for that. And that's how I'm playing it, doing those numbers. So I could say I could create a half hour video and, and here we go. And it's, it's going to be me and Harley at the end of this video. And that's it. That's it. You know, one person. And but if I can have, you know, 50 people, 100 people watch a video and 50 of them get to the end or even 30 of them get to the end and a real percentage of them actually goes on to the next video, I'm earning the watch time that YouTube wants and values so much. And maybe I can continue on them on into that playlist. Maybe I sold the whole playlist of two or three videos. So that's where I am right now. And I think that's going to be very helpful. And so I'm starting now, starting my videos with the end playlist in mind. And that's where I am. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll see how it works. <laughs> I, think, I think it is the right approach. Uh, whether, again, you know, th there's a lot that goes into YouTube. And having the... Um, the skill to get you there is, is another thing. But I have plenty of videos that are three, four, five minutes that take people to 50% without a problem. I know what to do. It, I know what to do. When I do it right um, and I'm not being lazy, it gets done and I do it well. 
but I often crank out a lot of videos that I did not do all of the things that I need to do. I have a sheet here. It's 2019 YouTube and it lists all the things that I need to do mentioned that is appropriate for a good video. And, and that that's important to me. So whatever anyone is working on, just keep learning. I've been doing this YouTube thing regularly for over two years and I'm still learning, but that thing was presented at the right time when I needed it. Is that mean all of a sudden my channel blows up? Probably not, probably not at all, but it, it will make it stronger. It'll certainly make it a stronger channel. And, and my channels are growing and that's, that's important. You know, comparing to everyone else isn't the way to go. Whatever you do, whatever you're try, striving for, whatever channel you're trying to build, whoever you are, wherever you are, whether it's a podcast or a blog, just as long as you're competing against yourself and you are moving forward, then you will most certainly, uh, you're, you're most certainly in the right direction and you'll get there. You'll get there. Remember, there is never a point in which you have arrived. There is never. Those with 50,000 subs are looking at 100,000 and those with 100,000 are staring at a million and those with a million are wondering why they don't have five or 10. I mean, it, there's never a point which you've arrived. So be happy where you are and just keep moving forward. And if you start to pull back, try to figure out why. Thank you so much. And thank you, Harley, as always, for being here. I, I truly do appreciate you being here and asking questions. We'll talk to everybody next week. And uh, I have a few videos for this channel too, the Photography Business Channel, which this uh, podcast is located on. And uh, I, I kind of take the same strategy. Um, I, it's a lot easier for me to grow this channel. So um, I'm taking the same strategy here too. All right. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much.